exposure to lead from exhaust gases resulted in the loss of more than 820 million IQ points for the U.S. population. According to American scientists, exposure to lead in the past continues to affect the health and well-being of our contemporaries in ways that we do not yet fully understand. Lead is a heavy metal and a toxic chemical element that has cumulative properties and has a detrimental effect on the body, accumulates in marine sediments and fresh water. In the 20s of the last century, the Americans were the first to decide to add it, or rather, tetraethyl lead, as an additive to gasoline. Before that, the fuel had a low octane number, that is, it had a bad effect on the operation and survivability of the engine and its operation. The toxicity of lead was known, however, apparently, at first it was believed that due to the low content, there would be no great harm. However, in 1996, the United States and Germany banned the use of this poisonous and carcinogenic organometallic compound in gasoline, and other European countries and Russia at the beginning of the 21st century. The world is still reaping the benefits, in developed countries, the historical use of lead in paints, pipes and gasoline has left water, soil, and homes enriched with this element. As shown by a new study by scientists from Florida State University and Duke University in North Carolina, USA, lead exposure affects not only the main body systems, weakens immunity, disrupts metabolism, provokes the development of cancer and so on. Among other things, mainly inhaling it with exhaust fumes in the past has reduced the IQ of living Americans by a total of 824 million points. The results of the work are published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. As its authors note, from the late 1960s to the early 1980s, the average level of lead in the blood of a resident of the United States was three to five times higher than the control value today. Three and a half micrograms of lead per deciliter of blood is an occasion to go to the doctor. That is, millions of today's adults, at least in the U.S., were exposed to high levels of lead as children. This according to previous animal studies and epidemiological data, disrupts the development of the brain, bones and cardiovascular system and ultimately affects cognitive abilities, fine motor skills and emotional regulation. The researchers use data from the United States Census, statistics on the effects of lead from exhaust gases and a national survey on this topic conducted by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention from 1976 to 2016. They estimated the number of Americans at the time of 2015 who were born no later than 1996 and were exposed to lead in various concentrations before, during and after the leaded gasoline era. As the analysis showed, of the 318 million people, only 131 million had levels of this element in the blood below 5 micrograms per deciliter in childhood. Nearly 100 million, 31% of the population, had more than 10 micrograms per deciliter of blood, double the 2015 rate. About 10 million people who lived in 2015 had 25 micrograms of lead per deciliter of blood, seven times higher than normal as children. Lead exposure in early childhood varied significantly depending on the cohort. And LT. And GT, its rate was relatively low in people born in the 1940s, increased dramatically in middle-aged residents and decreased sharply in younger ones, the researchers note. Thus, the level of lead more than 5 micrograms per deciliter of blood in childhood was detected in 90% of Americans born in 1951 to 1955, in 99% of those born in the 1956 to 1960s, in 97% of people born from 1961 to 1965, and in all those born in 1971 to 1975. For comparison, a similar indicator was found only in 6% of children born from 2001 to 2005, 3% born in 2006 to 2010 and only in 1% of those born in 2011 to 2015. People born from 1951 to 1980 had particularly high levels of this element in their blood during childhood. 
for example, in about 78% and 73% of children born from 1966 to 1970 and from 1971 to 1975, it exceeded 15 micrograms per deciliter of blood, the scientists add. In their opinion, in 2030, at least 43% of U.S. residents will have blood lead levels above 5 micrograms per deciliter, in childhood, and 23% from 10 micrograms per deciliter and above. Over time, the indicator will continue to decline. As for the decline in cognitive abilities due to exposure to the toxic element, in 2015 the U.S. population lost 824,097,690 IQ points, about 2.6 points per person. The cognitive deficit associated with LEAD was the greatest for the cohort of 1966 to 1970, population, about 20.8 million. In it, the average decrease in IQ in one person was 5.9 points. Cohort from 1961 to 1965, minus 4.8 points, from 1971 to 1975, minus 5.7 points the authors of the work write. In addition, more than 7% of Americans born in the 1966 to 1970s and 1971s 1975s, collectively nearly 3 million children, had lead levels above 30 micrograms per deciliter of blood. And their cognitive abilities were below average, often in the range of diagnosable mental retardation, IQ and LT, 70. Some text goes here according to our forecasts, the loss of IQ scores due to lead exposure in childhood will be similar in the future, by 2030, the IQ of the population will therefore decrease by 709,054,633 points, which corresponds to 2.03 IQ points per person, the study emphasizes. It may seem that nothing terrible will happen, but at the individual level, even a relatively minor deficit in cognitive abilities can greatly affect a person's life, health, well-being and professional achievements. Scientists believe that pronounced exposure to lead in early childhood will remain a hallmark of the population of the United States for the next few decades. In addition, even recent indicators of this element in the blood are abnormal. The United Nations Children's Fund estimates that 800 million children in the world today are exposed to lead, largely due to inadequate regulation of businesses in developing countries. Thanks for watching.